Hey everybody, I'm Laurie. I'm VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about context augmented knowledge assistance. You've probably by this point heard about retrieval augmented generation and how amazing it is. And if you haven't, then we have plenty of videos about it. But today I'm gonna to be making the case that RAG by itself is not enough. I'm going to be talking about agents, how they're essential to sophisticated knowledge retrieval, the key components of an agent, and how to build one in Llama Index. The first thing to know is, what is Llama Index? We are a framework in Python and TypeScript for building LLM-enabled applications over your data. We connect to your data wherever it is, and we help you parse it, index it, store it, and help you build sophisticated software that helps you query it. But open source is free, and we're also a startup, so how do you make how do we make money? Is a frequent question that we get. The answer is Llama Cloud. If you want to build a sophisticated data retrieval and querying system, you can build it yourself out of open source, or you can get us to build it for you and host it and scale it and provide best in class results. Llama Cloud is currently in a closed beta with a limited set of design partners. However, something you can try right now is Llama Parse. Document parsing is essential to knowledge retrieval, and complex documents are extremely difficult. We've compiled all of our expertise into Llama Parse, a cloud service that does all of that work for you. It's free for up to 1,000 pages a day, and you can pay as you go after that, at less than a penny a page. That's it, sales pitch over, let's talk about RAG. If you've been working with LLMs at all, you will probably know about retrieval augmented generation or RAG. You ingest your data, you parse it into chunks, you embed those chunks, and you store them in a vector store. Then you use a query to perform semantic search on the chunks in your vector store. You take the chunks you retrieve and pass them to the LLM with the query, and the LLM generates a response to the query based on the data that you gave it. That's the RAG pipeline, and that's great so far. If you've spent five, more than five minutes with Llama Index, you'll probably also know how to put together a very basic RAG pipeline. The one in this slide is our famous five line starter. This does it all. It ingests from a directory called data. It parses the files into document objects. It creates an index out of them by embedding the chunks of each document. And then it lets you run a query where it embeds the query, fetches the most relevant chunks and sends them to the LLM. Pretty good for five lines. But the point of this talk, indeed the point of Llama Index in general, is that there is more to this problem than naive rag. Naive RAG is limited. It tends to work for simple questions over small sets of documents. There are a number of ways that Naive RAG can fail. One task it's not great at is summarization. If you've got an entire document, the query summarize this is going to find a summary if that is not going to find a summary if that's not already there in the document. It's really going to struggle to summarize because RAG is closely related to semantic search. To summarize it, it would have to fetch the whole document, but that's not what it's designed to do, and it can't exceed those parameters. Another task that's tricky for a strictly search-based RAG pipeline is comparison. If you've got a bunch of data about multiple people, say candidates in a recruitment database, and you ask Naive RAG to compare them, it's going to use that as a query. It's going to try and retrieve information about both people in one shot. That's going to limit how much you know about each person, and it also creates the potential for it to get those chunk, different chunks mixed up and describe one person as the other. It will also fail with questions that require implicit data or understanding. If you ask a naive RAG pipeline, what is the revenue of the highest performing rideshare company in the US? It's not going to know which company that is. It's going to perform a semantic search for highest performing, and it's not going to find Uber unless Uber happens to describe itself that way. Those last two are examples of a larger failure mode, which is multi-part questions in general. Ask your pipeline to summarize the, ar the arguments of Article A and the arguments in Article B and put them in a table and compare them. It's going to get very confused trying to do all of that in one go. That isn't to say that naive rag is useless. It's very useful for many things. It's necessary to get a lot of stuff done. It's necessary, but not sufficient. Lots of tasks require semantic search, but lots require more than that as well. How do we go beyond the limits of rag to fully utilize the power of LLMs? There's two avenues of improvement that we can follow here. 
The first is to improve the data quality, and the second is to make your querying more sophisticated. We're going to be focusing on the second one. But we already mentioned LlamaParse, and the first method, improving data quality, is why LlamaParse exists. Better parsing can take the same data and make it more accessible to an LLM, significantly improving the results of searches and making complex tables and charts comprehensible. The other thing you can do for your data is simply have more of it. That's why Llama Hub has hundreds of data connectors to get your data out of every place it can be. If there's one thing that we have learned from the magic of training LLMs, it's that at a certain threshold, quantity leads to dramatic leaps in quality. But let's focus on, on the second method, improving the sophistication of our querying. A naive RAG pipeline has a bunch of limitations. It's single shot, just one question and response. There's no query understanding. It's just semantic search against the text of the query. There's no tool use, so you can't go out and seek more information. There's no reflection or error correction. The pipeline does not check whether it's really answered the question adequately. And finally, there's no memory. Every question is brand new. There's no memory of previous queries. We can fix all of those. By building agentic RAG, you can do a whole lot better on every front. You can make your queries multi-turn. You can have the agent understand the question and plan how to get the answer in multiple steps. You can make RAG just one of many tools allowing you to interface with the wider environment and many sources of data. You can use reflection to figure out if the response is adequate and course correct if not. And you can have memory so that each step towards the solution becomes part of a larger context. Getting all of that done is a lot of work, but it's work that Llama Index does for you. The strategies we're talking about now exist on a spectrum of complexity. Some are very simple to implement and don't require too many calls to the LLM, but others are more advanced. And with additional calls to the LLM, you also increase your monetary cost and your time cost in latency. Some are not fully agentic by themselves, but components that you need to make an agent. We're gonna break this down and go through each of these in turn. First up is routing. The simplest form of agentic reasoning. Given a query and a set of basic tools, the router uses the LLM to select which is the best answer to the question. Uh, this can solve the summarization problem by making one of the available tools a full document rather than top case search. This is built into Llama Index as the router query engine. Here's an abbreviated example of that action. You can see us creating two tools one of which is a regular RAG query engine, and the other is specifically a full document summary. And then we provide both tools to the router and spe spe specify that the LLM should do selection that's, this solves the routing problem, but it's still one shot. We'll work on that problem later. The next tool that we can add as we build up to an agent is memory. This is theoretically simple. As you run queries, you include them in a history as you pass the entire history as context to your further queries. This is basically how chats work with ChatGPT, for example. In practice, it gets more complex as your history begins to overflow the size of your context window. You have to get clever about condensing the history so it still fits. Again, this is built into Llama Index. This is almost identical to the five line starter, except instead of a query engine, we've created a chat engine and we chat instead of running queries. All of the memory stuff is handled under the hood for you. Then we can add one-shot query planning. This takes a complex question and breaks it up into simpler questions, each of which can be run in parallel without conflicting with each other. You can then take the resulting responses and get the LLM to aggregate them into a single adequate response based on far more context than trying to do it all at once. The built-in here is called the sub-question query engine. We can create as many RAG query engines as we need, give them metadata describing what each one does, and provide an array of them to the sub-question query engine, which will execute as many queries in parallel as it needs to answer the question and then combine the answers. The router query engine and sub-question query engine are two specific examples of the bigger part of making agents and agentic RAG effective, which is tool use. You can describe an arbitrary API to an LLM, get it to infer the parameters of that API, and then get it to call that API. The result is that you can get the state of the world, not just documents. You can even modify the state by taking actions. 
Tool use doesn't just pass a query, it adapts the query to the tool. In auto retrieval, for example, it takes the query and uses it to decide how to pre-filter the data by using keywords in the metadata. If it's talking to a SQL database, the query is transformed into a valid SQL query. Talking to another application like a calendar, the query becomes an API call to that app. You've already seen some examples of tool use in Llama Index in the router query engine and the subquestion query engine. These both use RAG engines as tools, but here's an example of just using an arbitrary Python function as a tool. You can use as many as you want, and you can use query engines and Python functions at the same time. You can really go nuts with tool use. It's incredibly powerful. So we've seen the basic agentic strategies, but they are just the minimum necessary to create an agent. We need to go further. Let's make it multi-turn. Let's give it reasoning and planning. Let's give it reflection. And let's talk about how we get that done. There's three types of agentic reasoning loops that I want to talk about today. Sequential, DAG-based, and tree-based. These also live on a spectrum from the simplest and cheapest at sequential to the most complex and expensive variant. So the first is sequential. Generate your next step given your previous steps. This is sometimes known as chain of thought. One of the most popular patterns here is called React. Not React the web framework, but reasoning plus action. We already saw it when I demonstrated tool use. In React, the agent generates a distinctive pattern. It generates a thought, it comes up with an action based on what that thought implies it should do next, and it stays in a loop coming up with thoughts and actions trying to get closer to achieving its goal until it reaches its goal or it gives up. You can see this in action in the output of a React agent shown here. It creates a thought about what it should do next, and it selects one of its available tools as an action. In this case, it has an add and a multiply tool. And then it has an observation, which is, whether the, which is whatever the output of the tool was. It keeps going until it doesn't need any more tools to answer the question. This is the basic agent loop. The next step up in sophistication is the DAG-based planning agent. To back up for a second, a DAG is a directed acyclic graph, which, if you're not familiar with it, is easily summarized as something kind of like a flowchart. <coughs> Boxes with arrows between them leading to a goal. In DAG-based planning, the LLM comes up with a full plan from start to end to accomplish the goal like a flowchart. A critical part of this planning is the ability to replan when things don't work out. Every few steps, it can observe what's happened and decide whether or not the plan still works. The ability to self-evaluate is called self-reflection. The LLM can tell whether the LLM is doing a good job. You can also, of course, get a human in the loop to tell the agent whether it's getting closer to its goal. Once again, doing this in Llama Index is simple. We've created two tools in advance, RAG pipelines that have financial documents about Lyft and Uber in 2021. We provide these to a function calling worker, which is what does the actual work. And then that worker plus the metadata about the tools is provided to the structured plan planner agent, which creates the DAG-like plan. Here's the first step of the output from the structured agent planner. It has two initial tasks and then a final task, which depends on the output of those two. If we included all the output, we'd see it combining these answers. But still, DAG-based planning works best when the task is sufficiently constrained that there's a clear route from zero to the solution. Some tasks aren't like that. When you get to a more open-ended task, we get to tree-based planning. There are several variants of this, including tree of thoughts, reasoning via planning, and language agent tree search. But they have some fundamentals in common, which is that they don't know in advance how they're going to be able to solve the problem. Instead of building a single plan from start to finish, these agents create experiments. They come up with several different new actions and execute them in parallel. Then they look at the new states generated by those experiments. Are they closer to their goals than before? Which experiment got them the closest? How do they know if they got closer? You can give them an external way of measuring, or you can get the LLM to perform self-reflection to estimate how far it's getting towards its goal. The agent can then select the most promising states and perform further explorations while dropping states that don't have good outcomes. This is called balancing exploration, creating new branches, versus exploitation, following the most promising paths. 
<clears throat> One of these strategies implemented in Llama Index is language agent tree search or LATS. As we did with structured planning, we create a worker from a set of available tools. The expansions parameter controls how many new branches the agent will make from each node, and the rollouts parameter controls how far down the tree the agent will keep exploring when it's creating a plan. So now we've got a pretty great agent. It can route queries, it can remember what it's seen, it can plan what to do next, it has a variety of ways to do that, and you can do it all in Llama Index. So what else can we add? Well, lots of stuff. First, there's observability. We provide a variety of integrations that give you full instrumentation of everything that's going on in your app so you can see how it arrives at an answer. Then there's low-level control. We have an API that lets you control your agent step by step as it completes a task. This is really useful for putting a human in the loop or just providing better UI around controlling your agent. And there's also customizability. Everything in Llama Index can be subclassed and customized, and agents are no exception. You can take any of the agents you've seen here and modify their behavior to suit your needs, giving them arbitrarily com complex rules. So where do we go from here? The next frontier is multi-agent interactions. We've seen some very exciting work in this space, allowing you to create multiple agents and define an explicit interaction between them. Or even more interestingly, create each agent as its own microservice capable of arbitrarily interacting with others. Stay tuned for Llama Index support for this new method of interacting. So to quickly recap, we talked about Llama Index and how to use it to do basic RAG and the limitations of basic RAG. We talked about the agentic components like routing, memory, planning, and tool use. We talked about agentic reasoning, sequential, DAG-based, and tree-based. And we briefly mentioned observability, controllability, and customizability. I hope this has been a useful guide to where we hope to see RAG go in 2024. All of the resources that I've mentioned today are linked in one place from this final slide, so you can follow the QR code or you can follow the links in the description of this video. Thanks very much for your time and attention.